So here's the problem. Javante Tank Davis seems to be a generational talent, right? We look at him in the ring. We see the spectacular punching power. You know, he looks to have great IQ. Even when he gives up rounds in the beginning, he figures you out, and then he gets you out of there. Um, he has great hand speed, good footwork, custering off nicely. All the things you want to see of a great champion. So what's the problem? Well, we're going to talk about that right now. But first, if you're new here, thank you for stopping in. And if you're an older subscriber, thank you for supporting my small community. Slowly, slowly growing, but that's okay. We'll get there eventually, wherever that eventuality may be. Now, what's the problem with Javante Tank Davis? Well, here's the problem. So his next matchup, everybody saw it was Ryo. I didn't report on it because, one, it was never announced. No one has said anything, really. It was just rumors. And all these YouTubers wanted to run around and say it was Ryo Valenzuela. It got close, but the reason it didn't really happen is because they wanted Ryo to come down to 135. Why? Why would you do that? Ryo could say, well, that's my biggest payday of my entire career. I can go down. But he knows if he gets flattened for whatever reason, because not only will he have to come down, but there will probably be a rehydration clause of how much he can gain back, right? Why would you do that? You're the champ at 140, right? You're a champ at 140. You beat Pitbull, who gave Philly uh, Javante Tank Davis his toughest fight. Whether or not Javante Tank Davis's hand was hurt or not, that's not the, that's not the neither here nor there, right? We were up on on, on Pitbull, right? And Raya kind of beat him. I want to say easily, easily, but he really didn't struggle too much with Pitbull. So that elevated his stature. He benched his controversial ass loss against Colbert. So, really, Rayo is up, right? Rayo is up. So, why would he come down? For, let's just say Rayo's biggest payday was $1.5 million, And I don't know because I'm not sure. What is he going to get against Tank, right? Maybe $2, 3000000 million, right? Um, or he can defend and keep winning up in his brand at 140 hopefully. And he's betting on himself. Rather, and, and if he loses at 140 well, it's just he lost at 140 not because he went down and then his paydays dry up, right? So that's number one. And that's the thing that really is hurting Tank. He's making people come down, or in this case with Lamont Roach, a WBA champ of one loss, 25 wins, and only 10 knockouts. He's making them come up. He's offering him probably a biggest payday of his career, but he's making them come up to 135. Now, that's not a big leap like two, three weight classes. That's just one weight class up. But Lamont Rose just became champion not that long ago at 130. There's really no one really for Lamont right now. Well, there's a couple of fights that 130 to make. I'm not, I, should, I shouldn't say that. But in the immediate future, okay, Tank would be the biggest fight. The problem is that Tank's team knows that that's not a real threat with the punching power, you know, because he only has 10 knockouts and 25 wins. But he isn't still in his relative prime he's 29 years old young kind of fast but doesn't have no one on his resume he lost to jamel herring on a unanimous decision i believe so that's his only recognizable name jamel herring which is a loss he lost to him if 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 lamont roach was at 140 and tank was going to 140 then you would say okay at least yeah lamont roach is not an elite fighter but tank is going to 140 now that makes a that's a sensible fight to take. Stay busy, move up to 140, fight the champ that if he happened to have been a WBA champ or something like that. Or even if he wasn't, he's just still at 140. It's a showcase fight for him at 140, which he had already done before, but nobody knew that Mario Barrios had a weight clause at 140. So it wasn't like he fought them at their weight without the restrictions he still made them restrict themselves because of the payday right the payday that he can give them so now he's 29 30 years old tank right he's in the cusp of now coming to a point where he's at the top of his peak and then you know he's gonna be on the other side of it still at the top and at any given moment that thing can slide right it doesn't matter sometimes genetics and time isn't wait for no one some fighters whether they're abusive bodies or not, or have been in wars, and it doesn't matter. Sometimes they just genetically break down. I don't know if that's the case going to be with Tank. But from 25 to 29, where we should have been seeing him with the biggest names of all time, we did not see that. How good is Tank really? We don't know. We've never seen him against a fighter that if it's in the same breath as him, regarded as him, 
with one without a weight class or two in the same weight class. We just haven't seen it for one reason or another. And his prime just keeps being wasted. I get it. Loma said no. That's a clear duck. He said no, which is a shame, right? But also Loma is now on the other side, further down the back side of the prime, right? Devin Haney, God knows what's going to happen in his career. That fight should have happened. It didn't at 135. That fight is... Matter of fact, that might be Haney's only chance really to get another big fight is to come down back to 135 and fight Tank if he wins in his next match, which is whatever. It's another video, right? But so now what do we have left for Tank, right? What do we... I, okay, after this fight, what, what do you have left? If Loma decides to retire, and I believe that... Shakur will fight Cepeda or the winner of, uh, of um, you know, uh, Farmer and Cepeda and then move up to 140. I don't think that at this point Shakur can sustain 135 pounds. You see him, he's a big kid. Like, he just broad shoulders, you know, he's a big kid. I don't think he's going to be able to sustain 135 after the Cepeda fight. I think, or whomever he fights at that point when he comes back, I think he's going to have to move up to 140. Who's left, Right. Who is left for him at 135? He's going to keep asking guys to come up. He's going to ask Inoue to come up for like 126, like all the way up to 135. That's a big ask. And even if he beats Inoue, really the credit is going to go to Inoue and not Tank. So if he moves to 140, picks a bum at 140 for December 14th or whenever it is the hell the fight is happening, and then his next fight is either Teofimo Lopez or, you know, um, uh, Ayo. Now we're looking like, oh, wait a minute, okay, th th those, are, those are fights we want to see. When Ryan comes back out of, out, of, out, of, out of, you know, suspension jail, right, he can come back and, and do a rematch without the rehydration clause and, and take on the likes of that. You can do Devin Haney at that. You can fight Devin Haney at 140. You have a lot of options to do that because now you're pushing yourself. Now we're going to see how great is this guy. Right, how great he's never, I think, unified past two titles. If, if that never been undisputed, could have been, could have been, we'll never see that now. So he just draws ticket sales, and his loan pay per views haven't been past 400,000. So while he can move a crowd, his pay per view numbers without Ryan have been in the 300. The, the 300,000, 285. It has, and I don't believe it's gone past 400. And if it has, it hasn't cracked more than 405, 410, something to that effect. But I'm pretty sure it hasn't gotten to 400 on his own. Even, you know, so this card on December 14th or 12th, whatever it is, is, is rumored to have the, the Charlos coming back. It's rumored to have Benavides on it. So if it does good numbers, I don't believe it's Tank. Tank shouldn't even be the main event at that point. It should be Benavides. Shouldn't be Tank. Because Tank is not giving us anything that we actually want. And then eventually his prime is going to just slide and he's going to fight a, a kid he should have fought before who is now a little younger than him and more seasoned and it's either going to knock him out or outpoint him, outclass him. And then we're going to say he sucked, but really did he? Because we don't know. Like, oh, he's exposed. But was he? Because we never saw him fight in his prime, other guys in their prime. You saw what happened with Devin Haney, with Ryan Garcia. Listen, Austrian doesn't give you superpowers. It just doesn't work that way. And I hate when people think that. It Literally, the first 30 seconds of the match, he, he pretty much almost iced Devin Haney. That's not Austrian. That's just prime versus prime at the, at the weight class that he should have been fighting in instead of bullying guys, right? Because after the weigh-in, after the fight weigh-in, they both weigh the damn same damn thing. So the weight advantage wasn't a thing in the ring, more preparation. I get that. But other than that, there was really no real advantages there. So when you fight a guy at your weight, at the prime, that you're supposed to be in, that's what happens. Same thing you see Fernando Vargas versus Felix Trinidad, right? Trinidad caught him on the way up and then stopped by 154 destroyed Fernando Vargas and kept it moving, right? He was stopping by. David Reed destroyed him, right? World champion, Olympic gold medalist, undefeated, destroyed him. Obacar destroyed him, right? And he just kept moving up until he hit his ceiling at 160. But even then, he destroyed William Joppe. He just couldn't get past Bernard Hopkins. And essentially, his career was over after that because he just didn't take boxing serious, and he lost to Winky Wright, then he lost to Roy Jones Jr., and that was the end of his career. That was pretty much it. You know, but again, he pushed himself. He kept going until he hit his ceiling. 
Sugar Ray Leonard did the same thing, and it worked out for him, right, against, against um, Hagler. Although some people, you know, claim that he didn't win. But this video's gone long on enough. You get it. Tank Davis's resume is not top 10. He's not top 10 because he really hasn't fought anybody to be top 10. Tell me what makes him top 10. Not of ticket sales, but in the ring. To me, he's not. He just, right now, there are people with better resumes than him fighting better guys that I would say they're top 10 in this division in and around 135, 140. Let me know what comes down below. Am I tripping? Am I bugging? Or am I right? Let me know what comes down below, and I'll see you in the next video, and I'm out. Peace.